Welcome to the DNX Podcast, the number one resource for entrepreneurs, nomads, and impact-driven souls. And I am your coach, Sylvia Christman. Welcome back, everyone. I'm here today with Chris Voss, who is the author of Never Split the Difference, which is one of my favorite books. So hi, welcome. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. Yes, I'm so glad we finally made the time. So I first came across your book in, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was 2016, wasn't yeah. it? Was like, yes, yep. it was published yep. right after it was published. And I devoured the book because I just thought it was the best insight into negotiation I had ever read. And then I had the privilege of meeting you in person last year at Summit, which was amazing. So thank you so yeah. much for making the time. Yeah. yeah, my pleasure. Pleasure is all mine. Summit's a cool place, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It was, it was a really, it was a really great weekend, and I think we all got to have really interesting conversations with interesting humans, which is why I always go. So, I've been dying to ask you a million questions, <laughs> but before I do, do you want it? I wanted to know what, what made you write this book? Well, you know. I, Hostage negotiation is, you know, applicable to everything. Mm -hmm. I thought that from the first moments that I started learning it a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, and we just had to get it together. We had to get to the point where we thought we had a full book, a full system. Yeah. So, you know, wanted to write it for a long time. Uh, my son and I started teaching this stuff uh, together in business schools. And, you know, when enough people uh, road tested it, uh, for us, then we re reached out and ultimately ended up with Tall Roz, who's a brilliant guy, an interesting dude, and we put the book together. So it was a, a labor of love over a long time. Yeah, and for those of you who are listening, uh, I'm just assuming everybody needs to read this book because why wouldn't you? But in case you haven't, this um, you used to be a FBI negotiator, and now you go and you train executives around the world on effective ne negotiations and communication, right? Yeah, I kind of I skipped over the FBI part, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I think I feel like I know so much about you. <laughs> so I get that. But I wanted to fill in those who may not have heard of you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. FBI hostage negotiator. Uh, and then, yeah, we just, we put this stuff. I mean, the people that we're coaching on this, not only are they have, making great deals, but you know what? They're having a great time. I mean, they're having the best time making great deals. They're not making enemies. They're making friends, and they're making great deals. Yeah, so my biggest takeaway from your book was that I could have a high-value trade and not have to compromise. Uh, compromise is horrible. I mean, you know, it's, it's funny because, like, if I were to ask you to compromise your integrity, You'd be offended by that, so or your principles, or compromise who you are. So why is it okay to compromise in a business deal? Because that's or any negotiation, because it's about who we are. You know, it's about our integrity. So yeah, compromise. It, it's a bad idea. It's and they're much better deals without compromise. What is a good deal in your opinion? Well, you know, uh, well you just you, you discover stuff that. Uh, you think, wow, that's cool. Um, th the other side is delighted. They they say, wow, that that works for you. I mean, we yeah, we could do that if that works for you. That'll go a long way. Um, you know, a speaking gig that I did a couple of years ago. One of my favorite deals of all because they paid me no fee, but they had money for books and they had a tremendous community and a lot of people that are trying to negotiate better. So they bought a bunch of books and then the coolest part was it was the local chapter, National Contracts Managers mm -hmm. Management Association. They said, you know, we're just a local chapter. And I said, well, is there a national chapter? And they're like, yeah. And I go, does the national chapter have a publication? And they said, well, yeah. And I said, well, let's do a joint article together for the national publication. You and us, we get an article out there nationwide and National needs to put stuff in a publication anyway. And National is like, all we're going to do is put an article and you'll go speak for free. And well, yeah. So, you know, it's just, it's kind of searching around inside the space 
And, you know, um, like I might say to you, what kind of plant is that in the background? Can you send it to me? <laughs> yeah. You know, ask, ask around, ask great questions and then, and then come up with something super cool and everybody loves it. How do you start a negotiation if you're going and let's just say it's, it's a bit more emotional. <laughs> uh, you know what? Every negotiation is emotional. Mm -hmm. everyone i mean you know the everybody's heard of this thing in our head called the amygdala mm -hmm. and like i'm really proud of the fact that i can properly pronounce that because i'm from iowa and i would if you'd asked me what an amygdala was i would have said it was a prehistoric animal or something you know? <laughs> i don't know what this thing is but every single thought that we have in our head goes through the amygdala in our brain so every every negotiation is emotional so how do you start it Here's, here's the best opening line in a negotiation. Sounds like there's something on your mind. Mm -hmm. Because if we're talking, you got something on your mind, you're dying to tell me. It's just, am I going to listen? You know, most people don't listen. Most people want to make their argument. They want to make their case. Mm -hmm. You might as well be talking to a wall. So it's refreshing to have somebody that, that is actually going to listen to you. So we listen like crazy at the beginning of every negotiation. We listen like crazy. What happened? I mean, in case of a hostage negotiation, I'm assuming it's a highly um, <laughs> emotional environment. That's um, what everybody assumes. Uh, yeah. host hostage negotiations are calmer than business negotiations. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the dumbest thing, but... Like if you got one side that's really looking to hear the other side out, things get calm really fast and they get, and they get settled out really fast. You know, a uh, typical bank robbery with hostages, you know, that's, uh, which by the way, there, there isn't a, they're, they're, they're really rare. It's to say that's typical is a, is a simple simplification. But the one I was in, 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 in Brooklyn way back when, you know, that, that lasted about total about between 10, 12 hours. A business negotiation where people are that emotional and are that far apart on what they want from the beginning is going to last weeks and we'll get done in 10 or 12 hours. You know, it's a, it's an equivalent, uh, differing of opinions. So, you know, we, we start paying it. You start paying attention to the other side. Things get resolved really fast. So you say, <laughs> That's what I say. <laughs> yeah. well, who's this guy? He's making this stuff up. I'm good at MSU. Make <laughs> stuff up. Right. So tell me your secret. What is this um, negotiating technique that actually gets it done so quickly? Well, you know, if, if I say it, um, it's kind of invisible, it's a stealth weapon. Yeah. If I say to you, sounds like there's something on your mind versus what's on your mind. If I say what's on your mind, it's a good question. Um, and we're taught we got to uh, gather information by asking questions. But it tr triggers a defense mechanism in you where your guard's going to go up slightly. It actually, the path of the thinking is the prefrontal cortex is the executive part of the brain. And the question triggers that. And you go, aha, he wants to know something. So let me give them a thoughtful answer. Let me think about this. But if I say, sounds like there's something on your mind, it actually kind of bypasses the executive part of your brain and gets right into your thoughtful brain and hits it immediately. And it triggers, instead of you being where you ask, I've asked you a question, you immediately go into thought mode. And then you start thinking out loud. And you say to yourself, yeah, you know, there was something on my mind. It starts coming out of your mouth and you just and you just start sharing stuff. So the simplicity of it is deceiving um, because it's designed to get you thinking, to, to make you feel like you're in a conversation. And you are. Um, which is, you know, it's probably the way we talked at <laughs> Summit. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> so. Do you recommend, because in most cases, or I don't know if it's in most, but in a lot of cases, people have very emotional reactions when they feel their needs are not being met. So how do you watch your own emotional distortion or potentially, you know, 
respond to someone else? Um, you know, one, one of two ways. Uh, the first way is if I just get really focused on you, I'll be less reactive. Mm. If I'm genuinely curious, if I'm genuinely interested, um, if I'm in the moment, uh, the more in the moment I am, uh, the more I'm going to pay attention because we start reacting. We start thinking about the future. Um, we get out of the moment. Um, you know, th there's, there's all this, all this mindfulness that's going on now globally, whether it's meditation, whether it's flow hacking, whether you're going to burning man, whether you're a Navy SEAL trying to get focused. I mean, Literally, there's a global moment to get focused in the moment to tap into this extraordinary intellect that we have and, you know, our subconscious, which is this powerful, powerful, powerful computer beyond anything that's on the planet now. And it's all about getting in the moment. So as soon as I get in the moment and then I start taking myself hostage, if I'm worried about where this is going, if I'm feeling anxiety, I'm taking myself hostage. I'm worried about where this is going. And every, every, the human potential movement, every aspect, uh, education, TED Talks, I mean, you name it, people who want to perform are really focusing on getting in the moment. And it's the same thing in negotiation. If I can get in the moment, I'm listening to you, I'm paying attention to you. And we're going to have a great discussion about the possibilities. Mm. How do you feel about lying? <laughs> <laughs> Makes me feel dirty. Now, lying is horrible. <laughs> yeah. Is it, is it counterproductive? Like what happens when people lie? Cause... Well, you know, it's kind, of, it's kind of two aspects of that. Um, the first aspect is most people are lying out of defensiveness. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know how to tell you the truth. I don't know how to break it to you. And I'm really worried about our relationship. Or um, uh, I need time to, to focus on a relationship because I just don't know how to talk to you. I mean, lying, uh, which has this evil connotation to it, intentional lying, you know, if I say something to you that I know is false and I know it's going to mislead you, that's pretty bad. But a lot of people leave stuff out, you know, lying by omission. You know, I, uh, even though I never said I was going to do it for you, you know, I didn't say when. You know, a lot, a lot of little stuff like that. And, and you know, when we're lied to, we, we get angry, but it's mostly defensive. Um, you know, I was, I was speaking to a, a, a woman, uh, brilliant, uh, N.J. Falk. Um, she's in fashion. She's in Los Angeles. She says, take responsibility for how it lands. So uh, N.J., and interesting, I, I hear this a lot, uh, a lot of really successful women. Because Cindy Mori, who's uh, Oprah's talent booker, comes to mind also. Cindy Moore is a straight shooter. She tells the truth, but she takes re responsibility for how it lands. Mm -hmm. A hostage negotiator takes responsibility for how it lands. Little things like instead of just flat out saying no, um, learning how to say, look, I'm sorry. Uh, that just doesn't work. So it's just learning how to tell the truth, but taking responsibility for how it lands. A lot of us ha haven't, haven't learned how to do that. If you can do that, you don't have to lie. And I want to tell you something. We deliver bad news all the time to people in business negotiations, not just in hostage negotiations. But, you know, we don't lie to people. We just take responsibility for how it lands. Yeah. So what if you find someone across from you entangled in a web of defensiveness <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, an inability, in my case, I would say then there would be a bit of an inability to break through and, and get to the point of it. What would you do? Yeah, I just start listening to them. And then I just start feeding it back to them in ways uh, where the entanglement is, is where the opportunity is. Really? I mean, um, some of the training we're doing right now, we're using a Chinese sim symbol for crisis because the Chinese symbol for crisis is actually two symbols and it's danger and opportunity. You know, there is no opportunity without danger and there is no entanglement without danger. I mean, it's all sort of messed up together. So I'm going to work my way into that really gently, letting you know it's okay to, to talk to me about the problems. I'm going to go right at the problems. You know, uh, let's say you're defensive around me. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say, 
yeah, it probably seemed kind of intimidating. Or I'm going to say, yeah, it's probably hard to talk to a hostage negotiator because you're wondering what he's thinking. I mean, I'm just, you know, it's kind of naming the elephant in the room and then being not scared of the elephant, just naming it. Uh, you know, we don't make the elephant in the room go away by pretending he's not there. But the crazy thing, and or denying that he said, there ain't no elephant in the room. Yes, there is. <laughs> but if you go like, hey, you know, there's an elephant in the room, calmly, fearlessly. The other side is like, hey, he's not scared of the elephant. The elephant maybe the elephant isn't that scary. It's, it's a really counterintuitive approach. So mm. I'm going to start at the entanglement. I'm just going to start calling it out and not in a way or with words or with a tone of voice that make you embarrassed or worried or concerned. Mm-hmm. Or make people more defensive. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's the idea because then it just gets even more tangled. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That just blew my mind. I can think of so many examples <laughs> just um, by listening to you. Yeah, well, I, sure. I, you know, here, here's a funny one I got the biggest kick out of because you say blew, yeah. blew my mind. Like, all right, so I'm lucky enough to have recently come across Stephen Kotler, and I'm a huge fan of Stephen's book, The Rise of Superman and Stealing Fire. Mm-hmm. You know, so we meet, and he's a crazy guy. He's a lot of fun. And so he starts reading my book, and I get an email from him said, I threw your book at the wall about 10 times because every time I read something I should have done, I got mad at myself and threw the book at the wall. <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> All right, well, just keep buying a book. If you, if you, you know, uh, drive book sales up. If you ruin everyone every time you read a chapter, you got to go out and buy another one, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is exactly what's going on in my head right now. I'm listening to you, and every time you say something, I have a scenario in my head that I could have handled better. <laughs> I will. Just by you know, following here, these principles. Yeah. Here's a cool thing about you. See, the, the, if you're thinking like that, uh, a friend of mine used to say, I reserve the right to be smarter today than I was yesterday. Yeah. You're open to learning. I mean, that that's the key. Just be open to learning. And like, all right, I'll go back and do it again. Or I'll do it better next time. Well, that's the key part, right? Because I'm like, I read the book, but like, clearly <laughs> I have perfected it. And it's the just like, you know, um, Stephen, it's a matter of throwing it against the wall over and over again because you keep missing a lot of details <laughs> right? yeah there you go right yeah it's um it, it takes a lot to actually master this trade how long did it take you to learn this um you start raising a level of your game immediately hmm. now how long does it take to ra- raise a level of your game a day you know, don't worry about mastery. They're actually, we tell, we tell people, get your reps in. Um, any given skill, you can wire the, the synapse in your brain to execute the skill with about 63 tries. Uh, so you take it one at a time. Uh, these skills are perishable, like, like playing golf, like playing tennis, like any, any sport, any activity you perform. But the minute you start working on it, you start getting better. I mean, we have people in our training sessions that will get up halfway through the session with a skill that we just taught them and go make a phone call and make a deal. So you can start getting better right away. Don't worry about mastery. Just worry about getting better. Okay. (laughs) Done and done. What's the number one thing you would recommend somebody do if they want to get started on this? You know, um, hear people out. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the, the number of deals that you will make just by hearing the other side out and summarize what they've said. I mean, we get no shortage of people that have sent us emails and say, you know, I was getting ready to give in. But I just decided to summarize their point of view, not mine, summarize theirs. Stop making your argument, summarize their point of view, and then shut up. Shut the front door. <laughs> <laughs> and every, somewhere between a third and three quarters of the time that you do that, then they'll make the deal for you when you shut up. Mm. Now, that percentage of success is high enough to try. 
because that eliminates a lot. You know, you just eliminated a third to three quarters of your problems, of your impasses. Mm-hmm. That's worth it. So learn, learn how to hear the other side out, summarize what they've said and go silent. And you'll be shocked at how many deals you make or how much agreement, how much, how much negative reactions are disputed. Um, and, and I'll give you another one that I love. Um, a guy who's making deals in tech, using this stuff, literally $100 million deals. So he's at a family gathering. His sister is a primary caregiver for their dying father, his youngest sister. And his youngest sister's had too much to drink. And he's seen this happen when she's had too much to drink because of all the pressure that's on her. She starts in on somebody in the family. And she starts in on him. And he realizes, this is my turn. You know, uh, she's under a massive amount of pressure. It's killing her. He said uh, all he did, he wanted her to let her know that she was heard out. He was going to hear her out. And he wasn't going to dispute anything, which is the essence of exactly what he's doing to make deals. She hammers him for an hour before she finally lets up. With no real resolution, he or so he thought. The next day, she sends him an email and she says, you know, I attacked you yesterday and you showed me nothing but love. Thank you for being my big brother. And it's the same thing. Hear the other side out. Don't dispute it. Business deal, interpersonal relationship with somebody that matters to you. Exact same thing. The amount of things that it'll resolve for you is, is, is sort of mind blowing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when I when I read your book, it it blew my mind because it's not just. I thought it was a business book. <laughs> you know what is it now? What do you I think? Mean, it's, it's a life book. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. I mean, it is a business book, and I mean yeah. we're in negotiate constant negotiation with everything and everyone in our lives, whether that's our partners or you know, children or relatives or business partners, employees. You know, there's a constant exchange or I'm going to the store or I'm, you know, getting my car fixed. And, you know, once you internalize these principles, you realize that you are in consistent negotiation or in a form of exchange. And if you learn how to listen and, you know, life becomes a lot easier. So, yes, it's a business book. And (laughs) I haven't found an area of life where it isn't applicable. Awesome. That's that's exactly what we want. So perfect. Yeah. yeah. And, see, you're open to it. That's the cool thing about, you know, what you're expressing, which a lot of people, uh, it, I'm sure anybody that knows you realizes this is true of you. But the okay. subtlety of it is you're uh, you're open. You're, you're willing to get better. Life is a delightful pros- prospect. It's an abundant thing if you let it be. And, and, and how do you let it be? You're open to stuff like this. Yeah, I, you know, I developed this habit of sitting down every evening and looking at like, what, how was my day and where are the things I could have handled better? And your book has been very helpful because there's quite a few areas where often I sit down and I go, "Mm, well, (laughs) (laughs) you know, and and I think the important component is always that I try to get be heard. I try to be heard or make a point over listening which then escalates the conversation or the confrontation. Yeah. Every time. Maybe that's just my specific shortcoming. <laughs> it's, it's every time. It's the same thing. Well, we, you know, and that's why, I mean, we all got that in us. You know, whether we openly express it or not, I mean, it's an aspect of our survival mechanisms. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, and don't lose that. You know, one of the things... You know, we focus so much on here and out the other side. It's a sequencing issue. Mm-hmm. I mean, we are, we make sure that we're heard also. Uh, it's kind of the application of Stephen Covey's advice, you know, hear the other side out before you can be heard. Um, so, you know, that needing to be heard is an essential component. It's just sequencing. It's just sequencing. <laughs> can, you, can you elaborate on that? <laughs> what right, do you mean so, by sequencing? Oh, yeah. That was really good, Mary. You just married me. I think you were showing off to everybody. <laughs> Did you realize you just married me? No. <laughs> yeah. When you said it's just sequencing, I mean, it's a beautiful pair, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, seek first to understand, then be understood. You know, the Covey advice from way back when. It's in a habit of an effective person. Uh, but, you know, it just, it's really seek first to demonstrate understanding. Like, if I really want you to hear everything I say, the fastest way to it is to hear you out first. Because otherwise, it's just going to be this really inefficient process of us talking at each other. Since you're going to, since you have what you want to say and you're not going to, you know, human beings, ears don't open up until they've been heard, which is really what Covey was trying to get across to us. So I'm going to hear you out first because I want to make my point. Otherwise, I'm wasting my time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've heard you, what, I've heard you say that compromise is a bit lazy. <laughs> it's lazy and it's horrible. Um, guaranteed bad outcome. <laughs> I, you know, I can't think. I can't think of how many different examples of it's bad. Give me one. I have ne- well, all right. So this is this is an inflammatory compromise, um, but I'll you know I'll use it because it's going to hit everybody that hears it, uh, uh, mostly on one side or the other. Colin Kaepernick taking a knee. Now Colin Kaepernick originally wasn't taking a knee. He was originally sitting on the bench. Hmm. And it came out that he wouldn't rise for the national anthem. And so he sat down, he met with a member of the special forces and he compromised. And a member of the special forces said, you know, we will knee, we will take a knee at the gravesite of fallen comrades as a sign of respect. And that touched Colin Kaepernick. It touched him. He's a, he, at his core, he's a decent guy, he's a human being. And, you know, and so to compromise, it moved him, <clears throat> excuse me, from sitting on the bench to sitting out. And he took a need to demonstrate more respect, not less. And look at the interpretation of that by both sides. Everybody has been out of shape over him and even more inflamed. His opposition is even more inflamed when his original intention was to show more respect. And, and I'm sure that he thought, well, I, I compromised and I'm even more of a villain now than I was before. And so it's, what's the intention of what you're trying to do? He tried to show more respect. And then in fact, it became an even bigger issue afterwards. And it, it's become a national issue. And we've got a president of the United States that, you know, throws a little gasoline on a fire on that every now and then, because he knows what a hot button issue it is. And that's just, you know, on a grander scale, it's an example of somebody who compromised to try to show more respect and it completely backfired. And, you know, there's no shortage of other examples. So, uh, you know, I just don't like compromise. Find a better way to do things. Yeah. What do you think a high value trait is? Well, you know, something you got um, uh, that you don't even know matters to me, but we begin to chat. uh, We call these things black swans. I mean, you don't know my whole You don't know what's driving me. You don't know my whole story. I don't know your whole story. So, um, you know, it's the example of the national publication and national contracts management association, being able to help out the local chapter, get a speaker because they got to put an article in a publication. You know, that might be it. Um, You might have a podcast and we might run into each other at summit. <laughs> and I don't even know you got a podcast. <laughs> you that know, way. and and you and you and you're looking for to have great conversations. Um and so I'm like, wow, yeah, we, we could do that. I mean, that, that's cool. So getting to know people cuz everybody by definition has overlap that um you know, I got I got I don't know what I got. I got, uh, I got a book. I got five books. I've never split the difference in Chinese. I don't read Chinese. <laughs> I run across somebody that does. They want the books. Yeah, we could trade. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, I've heard you say that, you know, it's always about the high value trades because if you go for compromise, you're leaving money on the table. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. I mean, we just decided like uh, the book is in, 24 languages in 30 countries Mm -hmm. and the publishers are wonderful. You know, every time we get a new publisher, you know, they're going to send me five copies of the book in their language. I mean, I got, I got five copies of the book in uh, Czech, in, in Polish, in, in China. I don't know what to do with these things. You know, after a while I'm like, they get them space in my house. (laughs) 
we're going to find people to give them away to. Um, not sell them, but give them away. Yeah. So, uh, you know, just fun stuff like that. Have some fun. Find, find out a great trade. You, do you speak Chinese? I'll send, you, I'll send you a copy in Chinese. No, German. So a big portion of the audience here is German. So because the DNX is uh, from Germany and we run them in English and in German. So if you have any, I would, you know what? I would love to read the book in German. That would so interest me to compare it because sometimes the use of language can trigger a completely new understanding. I guarantee I will look for the copies in <laughs> German and I will send you what we have and you can give them away I love it. to, uh, to your listeners. How about that? Look at that. There's a high that? value trade. I There's got a high copy. value trade. Yes. Woo-hoo. See, Woo-hoo. did it. <laughs> <laughs> this is exciting. Wonderful. Thank you so much. We're at the end of our time to everyone listening go read the book if you haven't read it. And apparently you can read it in German and in English. Super exciting. And um, if you want to sign up for your newsletter, it's a yes. black swan. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the newsletter is the edge. It's complimentary. Mm-hmm. So sometimes stuff that's free, you don't want it anyway. That's why it's free. But our newsletter is short and sweet. It comes out every Tuesday morning. Nice. And it's not a long, heavy read. It's one article and plus it's a gateway to all of our training now we uh you can i there's two ways to sign up one is text to sign up but you got to be in the u.s so are how many of you, are most of your listeners in the u.s uh it's half half i would say okay right. so those in the u.s text to sign up fbi empathy all one word to the number 228 28 22828 Send a message fbi empathy all one word don't let your spell check make it two words <laughs> And if you're not in the U.S., go to the website, Black Swan LTD. Go to the blog. You can also, all the back articles on the blog are there. You got you want to read about the other side's got more power. You're in a salary negotiation. We've got tons of articles in there. And in case you didn't quite catch that, we will post the links below the podcast so you can find it, text to it, and link to the newsletter. That will be exciting. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. The pleasure was mine. That's it for today. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you for your ongoing support. Before I leave you, I want to invite you into my world. Please go check out dnxcommunity.com. This is where you'll find the other nomads and evaders of convention. We'll see you there. And if you're interested in our English speaking events, go and check out dnxglobal.com. You'll find the link below this podcast as well and if you have time one last favor please go to itunes look for sylvia christman or look for the dnx podcast and leave a review thank you so much lovely people and i'll talk to you next time